Today we're taking a look at the top 5 hacks in blockchain history. Bear in mind that the numbers you're about to see are based on the token price at the time they were stolen. If you're new here, I'm Stefan and on Eat the Blocks we help Web2 developers get into Web3. So lean back, grab some popcorns and let's get started. Before we start, we've got some honorable mentions. Those hacks did not make the cut, but are very impressive nonetheless. At number 10, we've got the Zyf hacks of 2018 with $62 million stolen, followed closely by Nashash and its $64 million stolen in 2017. Then we've got Bitfinex, $72 million in 2016, Meyer, $113 million in 2016, and Bitgrail, $170 million in 2018. 18. But those numbers are nothing compared to what's coming, so be sure to watch until the end. I can guarantee the absolute dumbness of the last one will amaze you, don't miss it. Now at the number 5 position, we've got the KuCoin hack of 2020 with $285 million stolen. The CEO, Johnny Liu of the Singaporean crypto exchange, revealed that hackers had obtained the private keys to the exchange hot wallets. Now if you don't already know, hot wallets are software or desktop wallets that hold cryptocurrencies and are connected to the internet, as opposed to cold wallets which are not connected to the internet. So how did the hacker get his hands on? On all those private keys. Well, it turns out the hackers might have been lurking in the KuCoin system for quite a while, like a silent but deadly ninja waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. The attacker used a complex APT attack or advanced persistent threat. That's the type of attack where a hacker stays in a system invisible for a long time. He bypassed the security system, severely damaging it at the same time, but stayed undetected as long as he needed to, gathering as many private keys as he could. Immediately after the hack was reported, KuCoin began cooperating with various players from the crypto industry and they could recover a large chunk of the stolen funds, while a remaining $45 million is still in the hands of the thief, which KuCoin claims to have identified. Nonetheless, ever since the hack took place, what's left of the stolen funds has been on the move. A portion of it was sent to the digital currency mixing platforms Cheap Mixer and Wasabi Wallet, and another portion was sent to decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. Both the mixing services and decentralized exchanges allow individuals to convert a digital currency for another without going through any KYC or AML, which makes it very difficult for observers to track the stolen funds. But this hack pales in comparison to the next one, the Mongox hack. Back in 2014, the Japanese exchange Mongox was handling over 70% of all Bitcoin transactions, an absolute titan in the industry. But in February 2014, trading is suspended, exchange services are closed, and Mongox files for bankruptcy protection. It was revealed that up to 850,000 bitcoins had gone missing, presumed stolen, 740,000 coming from Mongo's customers and 100,000 from the company itself, around 7% of all bitcoin in circulation at the time. The whole was then worth around 480 million dollar. Today it would be closer to 17 billion dollar at the time of this recording. So what happened? Well, the Mongox hack is that type of situation where it's not clear if it was an inside or outside job. Similar to KuCoin, it seems that the attackers had been in the system for years, as early as 2011. At that time, they could get a hold of Mongox auditor's computer, change the price of Bitcoin to one cent, and bought 2,000 Bitcoins at that price, with Mongox customers' private keys they had gathered. Not only that, but Mongox's own private key had been encrypted and was also stolen. The company mismanagement seems to be a factor in this case. No use of any version control softwares, security updates and bug fixes, waiting weeks for approval, and complete disorganization within the firm. It was later revealed that a Russian national Alexander Vinik and his exchange BTCE, which was also shuttered in 2017 due to fraud, was laundering the stolen bitcoins from Mongox hack and know who the hackers are. He was arrested in 2017 in Greece and was sentenced to 5 years in prison. To this day, Mongox is still in deep legal battles. Up next, Coincheck. In 2018, Japanese crypto exchange CoinCheck revealed that $547 million in a lesser known cryptocurrency NEM had been stolen. At the time of the attack, CoinCheck was one of the most high profile exchanges in Japan, which was then among the biggest markets for crypto trading. So, what caused it? Frankly, just bad security standards. In a hastily called press conference, CoinCheck admitted it had not used adequate security measures to store the stolen cryptocurrency. The assets were stored in a single hot wallet, and the exchange did not use multi signature 
multi-signature authentication. Now, if you don't know, multi-signature authentication, also called multi-sig, is a standard security measure that requires at least two people to access a contract and execute transactions. Shortly after the incident, 16 of Japan's crypto exchanges merged to form a self-regulatory body, and the country's financial regulator, the Financial Services Association, ordered all exchanges to report on their cyber security defenses. It is still unknown who undertook the attack, but more than 30 people have been arrested in Japan in connection with selling the stolen assets. Okay, that was quite a lot of information already. Let's take a short break and let me tell you about Unblock Labs before we move on to the silver and gold medalist of this list. Unblock Labs is an eat the blocks company providing you with the highest standards in smart contract auditing and brand leveraging. Keep your blockchain assets safe and your shareholders satisfied. Visit Unblock Labs today. But finish the video first. All right, at number two for the silver medal, the Poly Network. Now, first, let me warn you, this one is going to be the most technical talk of the bunch. Although I keep it at the very minimum, it's still a little bit advanced. So the Poly Network is the global cross-chain protocol for implementing blockchain interoperability and blockchain web 3.0 infrastructure. That was a mouthful. In other words, it allows users to exchange tokens between blockchains, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. On August 10, 2021, a hacker transferred $611 million worth of Poly Network tokens to three wallets on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, and Polygon. But what followed the hack was quite surprising. How did he do it? Well, it was made possible by a mismanagement of the access rights between two important Poly Smart contracts. The first one is ETH Cross-Chain Manager, and the second one is ETH Cross-Chain Data. ETH Cross-Chain Data can decide who has the privilege of moving a large amount of funds contained within Poly Network's wallets. An ETH cross-chain manager allows you to call a cross-chain event by issuing a transaction on the source chain, Binance for example, and specifying a target contract on the Poly Network layer to execute. From here it gets pretty technical and this hack would deserve its own video. But in a nutshell, the attacker successfully brute forced a particular string or piece of text and triggered the ETH cross-chain manager contract to call a function located in the ETH cross-chain data contract with that string. The function he called allowed the attacker to replace the keeper's public key with his own public key. Therefore, he was granted the status of keeper and proceeded to funnel tokens out of Poly's Ethereum wallet, Binance wallet, Neo wallet, etc. into his own wallet. Surprisingly, either because it was too much to launder or because of his alleged good faith, the hacker decided to return the funds and Poly Network offered him $500,000 in bug bounty, offered him a job and calling him Mr. White Hat, causing an absolute outrage in the community. What a story. I'll put a link to an article with the details of the attack in the description of this video. But now at the number one position, the gold medalist of the biggest cryptocurrency hacks of all time. Here it comes, very close to the Poly Network hack, the $614 million Ronin Network hack of March 2022. If you don't know, the Ronin Network is an Ethereum-linked sidechain, a bridge that allows players of a popular play-to-earn game called Axie Infinity to exchange their in-game tokens for other cryptocurrency. In late March 2022, the network revealed that an attacker has stolen and had transferred more than 173,000 Ethereum and 25 million USDC to their own wallet. In this case, the hackers managed to get their hands onto five validators' nodes' private keys, including one run by a decentralized autonomous organization, Axie DAO. Three factors are to blame in this story, human error, social engineering, and flawed architecture, or to be fair at the very least, a lack of desire to increase the security of an aging architecture. The root cause for the exploit could be traced back to 2021, when Axie DAO gave access to Sky Mavis, the team of developers behind Axie Infinity, to sign off on transactions action on its behalf to mitigate user volume. However, this access was never revoked, which eventually led to backdoor access by hackers via social engineering. Add to that the centralized approach of the system, the use of nine validators, four of which are controlled by a single party, has been proved to be insecure. Now you cannot make this up. Here's the sweet part of that story. A week after the hack, the attackers used the stolen phones to short Axie Infinity and Ronin. The hackers hoped the news of the hack would bring their price down, however, they got liquidated before the news broke to the public. Yes, you heard that right. They stole the money, went to an exchange, spent all that money shorting Axie and Ronin, and they lost everything because nobody noticed there was even a hack happening. 
The market was working like any other day and they got liquidated. Following the attack, the developers of the game have promised to increase the number of validator nodes from 9 to 21 in the coming quarter. They also assured that if the stolen funds are not recovered within two years, the Axie DAO would vote for the next steps for its treasury. And those were the five biggest hacks in blockchain history. So at the very least, what can developers learn from them? Common security standards for the safeguardings of clients' data and deposits, like the SOC 2 for example, is unfortunately not yet applied by everybody, but should. Using hot wallets for long-term storage of sizable funds is a terrible practice that we can sadly still see in many projects today. However, alternatives such as hybrid hold code wallets are already in use by major trusted players in the industry. Proper management and organization within a company as well as having standards in version control cannot be overlooked. And a lack of decentralization of power highlights how easy it is for centralized assets to be halted or manipulated by hackers or by the company itself. If you're a customer, always do your due diligence on every service you're using or want to use. Look for reviews on forums such as Reddit, Bitcoin Talk, or social media such as Discord or Twitter. You know what to do now or at least what to start to reduce the risk of getting wrecked by hackers or sketchy projects. Before we hang up, let me remind you that if you have developed a blockchain application, either a Web3 platform, NFT game, DeFi protocol, or anything else, Unblock Labs got you covered. At Unblock Labs, we guarantee high quality security to your users and shareholders. We implement not only the highest auditing standards, but also allow you to leverage your brand. Give your shareholders some peace of mind, eh? Visit Unblock Labs today and get immediate feedbacks. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye.